All right, man, we already did the training camp battle for the cornerback position. We have yet to get to the safety position. I think Tracy Walker is going to be listed as a starter, despite Patricia saying it's competition in every position besides quarterback. But, you know, let's just say everything is the same in the front seven. Let's say it's a little bit better in the front seven this year. They get a little bit more pressure. Is the secondary better this year? Uh, will the secondary be better this season than it was last? Let's get into it. Appreciate everybody for checking in. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, bell icon button, share the video. And, um, yeah, just keep sharing the video. It's the best way they can help out. Um, my honest opinion on it is I think they got a lot of downgrades across the board, all right? Um, you talking about whoever going to start opposite of Tracy Walker in the, in the, in the, sec, in the, uh, in the safety room, I think it's just not going to add up. They talking about Harmon. If Harmon was any good, he'd be more of the special teamers on New England. He would be a baller. They could be able to let McCourty or Chung go and let Harmon get in there and play. But they they kept McCourty, and they tapped into his uh, his option, his team option, whatever it was. Tracy Walker, I think he's going to be better at the at the safety position this year. I think he showed, he showed a lot of improvement last year, and it wouldn't surprise me if he was going to be a pro bowler this year. Okay, Justin Coleman in the nickel, he is Justin Coleman. He is who he is. Last year, I don't really like discount him because he had an impossible test is to cover man coverage in one of the toughest positions to play in defense, and that's the nickel back position. I mean, the reason why it's tough and everybody can't go into the nickel and cover uh, receivers is because, you know, it's just not – you don't have a, the boundary to be the 12th unofficial um, defender over there, okay? So – is you, you know, versus him, and he can go a lot of different ways. He go left to the slot, he can go right to the slot, he can go up, he can run the corner, he can run the post, he can run option routes. So the slot position is a tough, tough position to cover, especially when you're not getting you're not getting pressure on on the uh, on the quarterback. Especially when you're not getting pressure on the quarterback. So, you know, Justin Coleman had a terrible year last year. He showed up in the Kansas City game, made some fumbles. But he did not play up to that contract, but it's not his fault. You know what I'm saying? Once again, Matt Patricia's scheme is making the players look bad, like it or not. And and that's the God honest truth. And I'm not trying to sit here and make no excuses for Coleman, but let's just say Coleman a little bit better than he was last year. But he had an impossible task of covering out the nickel and no pass rush help, no help, no help at all. That's a difficult position to, to, to play. I'm telling you, man. Go out there and tell your kid to go out there. <laughs> and somebody quarterback, he is just you out there versus him. Kid might smoke your ass. Shit, four or five years old. He may not can't, or she, he or she may not can catch yet, but she probably be over here smoking. I see so many people can't catch their toddlers or, or their kids already. Okay. So then you go to, you know, Desmond Trufant at the number two corner back position. I see that as a clear downgrade for Rashad Melvin. Ooh, Rashad Melvin gave up this many ear yards and this many, this, that, and the third. I was impressed by Rashad Melvin last year. Once again, under the circumstances that he was in, he held his own. It wasn't his fault that they caught Pat, man. Dude, you can't, can't nobody in this league where you can't press nobody past five yards. Okay. And you can't touch these receivers no more. After five yards, you ain't supposed to touch, grab, hand play. It's an impossible job to do, let alone they tell you to go in there and do an impossible job on top of an, another impossible job when you're not giving me no pass rush help. And if anybody watched Desmond True, I don't care what pro football focus say or not. Ask up your Atlanta Falcon fan. Pure trash. Garbarijo. Trash. Waste management. Now, maybe it'd be different for him in this Detroit Lions scheme, but Trufant is trash. You know what I'm saying? And he a quick, too. Once, once he get frustrated, you get catch, catch a couple. I just think it's a downgrade. They should have kept Rashad Melvin. They should have kept Rashad Melvin for, for, for less money. This is my opinion. And people going around saying Trufant is great. Man, fuck up out of here. Did y'all watch any Falcons games last year? I think he played nine of them. And the two pick sixes he got was in the same game. The same game. So I think that's a downgrade. Especially you put him in a system where it may not be no pass rush. Downgrade. And if I'm wrong, I'll come back and say I'm wrong about him. But I'm only going by 
his last couple years are broke down. They, his best days behind him, cornerback. Now, Kuda is going to be a downgrade from Slay just because he a rookie. Lack of experience. You know what I'm saying? And people talk about how great he is in college. I'm just trying to find out who did he lock down in college that was so good last year. I'm not trying to discredit that man, but who did fucking Ohio State play last year? Clemson top two receivers was hurt. It wasn't hard to guard Michigan receivers because Shea Patrick didn't hit the side of a, uh, the big house stadium. So that's kind of why I'm trying to understand that. Like, where did Okuda shut down somebody that was special last year? Because there weren't too many special Big Ten receivers. Unless they was on Ohio State. And some of them was on uh, some of them was on Michigan. Michigan has some good receivers, but they quarterback so You know? So I'm just trying to see, like, what's... I'm, every time I watch it, I'm like, who is this dude that he checking from Air Force University or from Kickback State? Like, who the fuck is these dudes? You know what I'm saying? Not saying that he's not a good good corner. Maybe he come in having Matt Marshawn Latimer type of uh type of year. Maybe he come in and have uh a Marcus Peter rookie season. Maybe he do show up and, and he, he go out there and he ball out so hard. I'm not saying that he won't. I think he's gonna be a great pick for for the Lions. Personally, I think he's gonna be exploratory, whatever that word is. He's gonna be real, real good for the Lions, man. But then we, you know, but overall, you know, looking at the secondary and it's in this totality and all of that, man, I just think it's you lost too many good players. You lost Quadra, you lost Darius. Um, you know, and I don't see you lost Melvin, which I think he better in this system than True Font. They don't have one clear upgrade unless, you know, Harris or Herman come in and play better than Quadre played in the past. I know Quadre wasn't that good last year because he got injured, but you really never know. But excuse me, I had to start it over. But I do, I don't see an upgrade this year, uh, personnel-wise, solely on the Lions secondary. I see an upgrade in the form of if Corey Udlin, what he say is true, and Patricia going to be a man of his word, and they're going to mix his philosophy and what he done in Philly with Jim Source and that successful Eagles defense. And they did a lot of great things with a subpar, and I say subpar, I mean subpar secondary. Then if it's a philosophy or, or a, a schematic difference, the secondary gonna gonna have it easier than the, the, the year before last. And that's just that's just the God honest truth. We don't know how good that secondary was last year because they were asked to do things. They was in man coverage the second most last year. And the only reason they was in man coverage, like what, 80% of the time or 85, whatever the number was, the only reason they was in man coverage for that amount of time was because injuries, they started playing more zone. So to me, it was never that the secondary wasn't any good. Last year on paper, I thought it was going to be really, really good, and it turned out to be a, a failure, being, I think, 32nd in the league and giving up yards. And I had to explain it to, you know, one Prog Nation, he a startup channel, where he said, well, they can't be no worse than they was last year. I said, obviously, you ain't really never watched the Lions. They always seem to slide under your expectations. You can be worse in, in, in more yardage. You can still be 32nd, but you can always give up more yards, more touchdowns, but it's going to come in the philosophy change in, in Matt Patricia. If Matt Patricia going to go down as a, a great coach, then he's going to show his versatility, and he's going to have to show more pressure. Disguise more. You can't disguise if you're not known for bringing pressure. Let me say that. You can't disguise more. You can disguise all you want to, but if they know you're not going to bring pressure, man, they're they not going to fall for it. You know, but I definitely I definitely see, as far as personnel, player for player, I see a dip. Because Okuda not going to be better than Darius Slay year one. True Fine not going to be better in this system than Rashad Melvin. All right? Um, Justin Coleman, he is what he is. I think Walker is going to be the clear upgrade this year. I think he's going to be better than he was last year. I think Coleman is going to be better than he was last year. I think those are two upgrades right there. You know, but remember, it's all about the system fit in New England. It's a big pothole right here. <laughs> Welcome to Detroit. But it's, it's a, I think, I think in philosophy is going to be their greatest upgrade. Real talk in philosophy. If they're able to come out, come in here and have a more complex defense. I see the secondary. I see Okuda getting some picks. I see Flowers 
not Flowers, but uh, uh, Trufant and Coleman and Walker getting some picks, whoever started the opposite safety position of Walker. I see them doing some solid things personnel-wise, um, if it is, but that's the mystery. You know, people talking about what Udall ain't going to bring to the table. You know, he, he didn't even talk about, you know, if he was going to call players or not. He didn't. He said, you'll see when the season comes. Well, we know that means you're not calling plays. So Patricia's still going to be calling plays. A lot of us made Paul Pascaloni the scapegoat. You know what I'm saying? And it wasn't even his fault. This is Patricia defense. I remember Mike Lombardi came on and spoke to 97 on the ticket. I can't remember what game we was about to play with the Lions. Um, but he came on last season. And he said that, you know, Matt Patricia was known for running a pass or finesse defense or, you know, not bringing enough, a lot of pressure in New England. He said this year New England brought way more pressure under their new defensive coordinator. So this is what he's known for. You know, so, you know, a lot of people like they, NFL, so optimism. More than any other sport, you'd be so optimistic that your team would be good and you upgraded here in the season, get here, and it don't be like that. And, and Lions fans ain't a lot of the hardcore Lions fans out here. They got pages, they got media outlets. You know, they sell optimism because it, it comes in the form of more financial um, dividends, all right? It got to bring more money. I'm a realist. This year, I don't have, people say, what's your prediction for? I don't have a prediction. I don't think last year I had a prediction. I just don't. It's, it's too much of, Patricia is too much of an enigma. Now, if you had to ask me, do I think Patricia's going to change change up his defense a little bit enough for the better, or if he going to let Udlin bring something to the table, you know, I say no. Just knowing the asshole, the arrogant, pompous, bitch motherfucker Patricia is, he going to just think his, he ain't going to switch it up. And he got job security. Oh, Sheila said she ain't going to even fire him this year because this year been an irregular year. So he know he got two more years left. You know, but I just don't see somebody that's as arrogant as him, that's quote-unquote a rocket science, changing it up. Year one, he came in with the reputation of being an asshole. He, he, he exceeded that expe expectation of being an asshole. That's a fact. Year two, did he try to change his mannerisms or change, or change how he socially interacted with his players? No. Did he try to create the Patricia character or the Patricia culture? No, he still kept trying to create the New England culture. So I just don't see nobody, a 40-year-old man, I don't see him changing it up. He's going to be stuck in his ways. He is who we, who we thought we, he was. And that's just the guy down the street, but... You know, when you look at personnel for personnel, obviously when you lose your best player on the team, Darius Slay, and probably another top three or four or five players in Quadre D, even though he didn't play like the last year because he had, he was injured, when you lose those guys, you know, and you replace them with a rookie, you know, you replace them, you know, with a with a with a with a with a, with a used to be a good top ten corner, but he faded in true fine. How can you upgrade? And then you replace him with a with a sophomore player, Will Harris, who struggled a little bit last year, got better down the stretch. So, you know, I just don't see an upgrade coming under the philosophy they ran last year. I just don't. But hopefully Udlin brings some things from Philly. And Matt Patricia let him implement it. If he brings some things from Philly, that means we're going to see more pressure. And we're going to see the DBs be have an opportunity to make a lot of plays on the ball that they didn't get last year. So, um... My whole thing is personnel-wise, I don't see an upgrade. System-wise, I can see better play if they upgrade the system. But, you know, you didn't see no nickel blitzes last year. You didn't see no twists, no stunts, nothing sexy. Nothing exotic, no disguises, just straight up. We know what y'all doing. The Lord know what y'all doing. The old lady in row 55,000 at the top of Lambeau Stadium knew what they was doing. And what you got to understand, when you don't switch it up, you don't disguise. Week one to week two get tougher. Two to three get tougher. All these different weeks continue to get tougher. Because now we see what you're doing on film, and it's not complex. And it's up to Patricia to make his DBs better this year. It's just simple. So I do appreciate everybody for checking in. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button, bell icon button. Um, follow me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. All the links in the description. You can check out the YouTube channel, Wild Goodfellas Sports TV, right here on YouTube for more sports, music, entertainment. 
outside the city of Detroit and Detroit sports teams. Appreciate the love support. One time for the one time. We gone.